I'm going to give you three exercises that don't require willpower and will immediately begin rewiring your brain so that you can stop being distracted and start using your phone the way you want to use it. Each practice comes from a specific time in my life when I was unsatisfied or disappointed with my phone usage. And over time, these are the practices that actually stuck because they worked. But before I go on, we need to quickly look at willpower. Otherwise, these exercises aren't gonna make a lot of sense. It'll take exactly 39 seconds. Willpower is the unwavering strength to control your own behavior. It's fantastic at mobilizing us in the initial stages of change, but not so great when we rely on it for long amounts of time. This is why we have habits, for example. It may take willpower the first week or two when going to the gym, but after a while, it's less resistance and it's just a part of you. Unfortunately, checking our phones is so rewarding for our brain, if we only use willpower when an urge comes, it can exhaust us very quickly as I'm sure you've experienced. So we use willpower to get the ball rolling, but with these practices, I'll show you how you don't have to rely on it in the long term. <sighs> I hope that made sense. Eh. Seriously, when I learned that, it made such a big difference because I didn't realize that I was relying on willpower. Anyway, here are the three exercises that I want to take a look at. Actually, the, the last exercise is the one that I'm, I'm using right now. I'm going through a time currently where I'm actually disappointed and kind of unsatisfied with my phone usage. That one, uh, that one will change you. The first exercise to start retraining your brain is what I very precisely call the Houdini effect. It's that feeling you get when things spontaneously appear or disappear. We get bored and then realize that's why our phone magically Houdini'd its way into our hand. We sit on the couch and the TV turns on. And then we notice that we're holding the remote. And this happens because we go through life on autopilot, being slowly hypnotized by the mundane. Our first step then is to make sure that our phone does not spontaneously appear into our hand. Here was my unconventional, possibly bizarre method of dealing with this. Instead of carrying my phone in my right pocket, I carried it in my left and I bought a phone sized pocket a notebook and pen and I put that where my phone used to be and then for good measure I removed all of the apps from my home screen so if I wanted to open something I had to actually search for it you psycho now what do you think happened like 20 times a day <laughs> I was snapped out of that hypnotic autopilot because I'd reach for my phone without even thinking and and it really doesn't take that long to train your brain to stop grabbing your phone on autopilot because we hate that feeling. It's like when you grab a doorknob and it's actually locked, or when someone just doesn't finish their sentences. But here's the thing, something that I wish I had done back then was whenever I caught myself reaching for my phone, I wish I'd actually pulled out my notepad and written down why I was reaching for my phone and what I was feeling in that moment. Pretty unconventional, but it worked for me. And you can use app blockers or whatever works best for you. You just need something to break that autopilot over and over and over until you start retraining that aspect of your brain. So I did this for a while, but eventually it kind of wore off, which is when I found the next exercise, which is so profoundly easy. I encountered this exercise about a year ago when I was reading Atomic Habits. No surprise there. And like Struthless says, I was really attracted to how lazy this was. Mm, right there with you, buddy. This exercise is probably one of the most effective and also the most simple. All you have to do is remove your phone from your environments. Yeah. Seriously, just, just try this exercise for an hour, okay? Turn your phone off completely, leave it behind, and go to a coffee shop and read or do some work. And something amazing will happen the second you leave the house. Because your brain knows that there's not even an opportunity of being distracted by your phone, which for most people is their number one distraction day to day. What you're doing is you're training your brain to make that switch from constantly expecting and, and having an ear open for your phone to not even having the possibility and redirecting all of that energy on something better. And by the way, this idea of eliminating from our environment can be applied to a lot of other things as well. And it's actually one of the three points in my last video, which talks about taking back control of our lives uh, with something I kind of call the environmental detox. Okay, so we've covered the, the first two, which is the Houdini effect and edit the environment. but. Here's what might surprise you. Like these are really good at creating margin between you and, and your phone usage. But if you want to actually rip this behavior out by the roots and legitimately unlearn it, 
then this last exercise, which is what I'm currently using, I'm, I'm currently in this, is exactly what you need. This is a science-backed, researched exercise that was so much more than I ever imagined. So let me explain what this is and how it works. The inverted Pavlov effect. You've heard of Pavlov's dogs, right? Where he would he would ring a bell and then give the dogs food, ring the bell, give them food over and over and over and over until the dogs associated the sound of the bell with the food. They would respond automatically by salivating when they heard the bell, even if they couldn't see or smell the food. It's like us when, when we get bored and then we check our phone and it's like, oh, this is entertaining, okay? And then the next time we get bored, check our phone. Okay, bored, check our phone. You have the emotion, which is kind of like the bell for them of boredom, which means phone. But what most people don't know about this study is he also studied how to undo that conditioned response. Which is like, you know, kind of a big deal because formula for unlearning unwanted habitual behavior, uh, yes please. And the way he did this was really simple. He would ring the bell, but didn't give them anything. And at first the dogs still responded the exact same, they didn't like it, obviously. But after a bit, they unlearned that association. So when they heard the bell, nothing happened. So what this means is if you have a habit of unwanted behavior, say phone usage, you can unlearn it. And it's not even that hard once you understand this exercise. And it's not with willpower where you grit your teeth and oh, just, just don't give in, just don't give in. No. To do this, we have to understand that we go to our phones in order to escape or avoid unwanted emotion, which makes sense, right? We don't want to feel bored or uncomfortable or awkward and our phones help us avoid that. But if you're like most people, we've done it so much that whenever we feel that emotion, the automatic response that happens is checking our phones. So here's how we undo this, quite literally. When you feel the urge to look at your phone, stop and notice what emotion is driving this action. And the easiest way to do this is to describe it as you actually feel it in your body. The last step is to observe how it physically makes you feel and to focus on that feeling until it dissipates. And the only reason this works, I never knew this, this is so cool. The reason this works is the lifespan of an urge or any emotion for that matter, which is just wild when you think about it, when you don't avoid it, okay, when you don't avoid it or try to push it away with willpower or just don't think about it, but instead actually let yourself notice and feel physically that emotion or urge, the lifespan is really short, like less than 20 seconds most of the time. And at max, 90 seconds, when your body literally flushes the chemical emotion out of your system. And what's so incredible about this exercise is it doesn't take willpower. So it's not exhausting because you're not trying to push it away. You're not trying to not think about it. Just, just don't think about it. And maybe even more incredibly, every single time you do this, back to Pavlov's dogs, you are, literally unlearning that behavior. The very first time I did this, I, I stopped myself when I felt the urge and I allowed myself to actually feel that unwanted emotion physically and, and notice it. And it was like this kind of antsy, jittery feeling in my hands and my feet. And I was like, this isn't that bad. Like, this is what I was trying to avoid. And then like 27 seconds later, it was gone like the urge, the emotion, gone. And I was like, uh. So to simplify everything, you're feeling the urge and you're not giving into it, which is what we learned from Pavlov's dogs, which is how you unlearn an association. And so within that, it's like, okay, how do we deal with these urges? And that's the second part, which is the allowing yourself to actually feel it physically and let it dissipate. This was so impactful for me because we do these behaviors that we are ashamed of and that disappoint us all because we are trying to physically avoid a feeling that unwanted emotion. And then you like go do it and you're like, this isn't even that bad. Like I can, I can sit with this for 30 seconds. I mean, yeah, it's a little uncomfortable, but it's nothing compared to falling asleep and dropping your phone on your face. And then you realize that you wasted three hours of your precious life on TikTok. Like, trust me, that, that, that's a way worse feeling than 30 seconds of discomfort over here. And if you want a whole book on this exercise and how it works with like 40 years worth of research, I would recommend 90 seconds to the life you love. It's like, 
really good. So links down below. This book is going to go in the top three probably of books this entire year.